In today's lesson, we are going to be learning how to manipulate algebraic fractions. And before we go into that, I just want to go over some of the rules of manipulating fractions in general. And a lot of this is going to be review from your previous grades. Let's say we had two quarters multiplied by three fifths. If you recall from your rules of multiplying fractions, when we have a fraction multiplied by another fraction, we can simply perform that by multiplying the numerators and multiplying the denominators. So that is going to be simplified to 6 over 20. And when we have something like this that contains a common factor in both the numerator and the denominator, we can actually cancel out those common factors and simplify this further. So let me actually write down 6 over 20 in another way. 6 over 20 can be expressed as 3 times 2 over 10 times 2. And now we have 2 on both the top and the bottom, which can cancel out, and we're going to be left with 3 tenths, and that is our most simplified form of this product here. Now let's say you had to calculate 2 quarters plus 3 quarters. When we're adding fractions, if we have the same denominator, we are simply going to add our numerators together, and they are going to have that common denominator. So this is going to be 5 over 4. Now what if you had 2 quarters divided by 3 fifths. Well, when we are dividing a fraction, that is going to be the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So another way of writing down this expression here is to say 2 quarters multiplied by 5 over 3. So because here we were dividing by 3 over 5, that is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, which is 5 over 3. And now we can do this the same way that we did this top example here. We're just going to multiply 2 and 5, which is 10, and we're going to multiply 4 and 3, which is 12, and that will give us 10 over 12. And again, we can recognize that the numerator and the denominator have a common factor, and that common factor is 2. So we can write this down as... 5 times 2 over 6 times 2, and we have a 2 at the top and bottom, which can cancel each other out, and we're left with 5 sixths, and that is our most simplified form. Now, what if we had an expression like this? Let's say we had 2 thirds plus 1 sixth. Well, we know that when we're adding fractions, we can only add fractions together when we have a common denominator. So this number at the bottom here has to be the same for us to just be able to add the top and write down a single denominator. So we can actually convert these into a form where both of them have 6 as a denominator by simply multiplying this fraction here by 2 over 2. So if we multiply 2 thirds by 2 over 2, that's the same thing as just multiplying this by 1, because 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that would mean that this is going to become 4 over 6, and now we have the same denominator of 6. So we can add these two together now. We have 4 over 6 plus 1 over 6, and that is going to be equal to 5 over 6, and that is our most simplified form. Now that we've reviewed how we manipulate fractions, let's go into algebraic fractions. Now let's say we were to have the following expression, 6x plus 10 divided by 9x plus 15. So we can recall from a few videos ago that in both the numerator and the denominator, we have a common factor in each of these terms. So let's first deal with the numerator um, as its own kind of expression, and then we can deal with the denominator by itself, and then we can see what we have. So if we're just dealing with the numerator here, let's take out a common factor of 2. So if we take out 2, we're going to be left with 3x plus 5. And now if we are 
just dealing with the denominator, if we take out a common factor of 3, we're going to be left with 3x plus 5. And again, if you don't recall, when we're taking out a factor, we can figure out what our new coefficients are by just dividing by whatever we factored out. So 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5, and the same goes for what we did with the numerator here. And now, what you might be able to notice is that we have a common factor in both the numerator and the denominator, and we can cross this out, and we're going to be left with two-thirds. And that is the final answer. So this expression here can be simplified to two-thirds. Now let's do another example. Let's say we have x squared minus 25 divided by 3x plus 15. Now whenever you're dealing with expressions like this, you're going to try to factorize both the numerator and the denom denominator and see if there are any terms that you can cross out on both. So what we can first recognize here is that we have a difference of two squares. x squared is a perfect square and 25 is also a perfect square and we're taking the difference between them. And we can recall from a few videos ago that when we're trying to factor a difference of two squares, we can simply write that down as x plus 5 and x minus 5. And just to re recap what we learned when we were doing the difference of two squares, we're just going to take the square root of each of these terms and we're going to have a bracket where we add them and a bracket where we subtract them. And now if we try to factor our denominator, we can take out a common factor of 3 and we're going to be left with x plus 5. And now we can see that we have an x plus 5 in the numerator and an x plus 5 in the denominator. We can cancel these like terms out and we are going to be left with x minus 5 over 3. Again, because we have our 3 here and we're left with our x minus 5 here. And one more thing that we need to add to this uh, final answer here is that we need to add a condition here. And that condition is that x cannot be equal to negative 5. And the reason that we have to include that is because with this expression here, we're trying to say that this here and this are the same thing. And in this case, this expression is going to be undefined when x is equal to negative 5. Because when x is equal to negative 5, this denominator is going to be equal to zero. And we know that when we're dividing by zero, our answer is undefined. So our expression here is undefined at negative five, but this expression here is not undefined at negative five, which is why we have to add this note here, that x cannot be equal to negative five. And that means that these two expressions are equivalent. Let's go over one more example. Let's say we have x squared plus 4x plus 3 divided by x squared plus x minus 6. Now let's use the same approach that we have been using. Let's treat the numerator and denom denominator separately, step by step. So let's try to factor the numerator first. Now we can see that this has a leading coefficient of 1, so we can use our initial method that we had used when we're trying to find two numbers that are going to multiply to give us 3 and that are going to add to give us 4. So let's look at our factors of 3. We have 1 and 3. So 1 times 3 is going to give us 3, and 3 plus 1 will give us 4. So these are going to be our two numbers here. So we can write this down as x plus 1 and x plus 3. And that is going to be our factored form of this numerator. Now let's try to factor our denominator. Let's do it down here. So we can use the same approach that we just used. We're trying to find two numbers that when multiplied together are going to give us negative 6 and when added together are going to give us 1. 
And because this is negative, we know that one of our numbers has to be negative and one has to be positive. So already we can write down x plus and x minus because we know one is going to be positive and one will be negative. And if we're trying to write down our factors of 6, we have 1 and 6 and we have 2 and 3. And immediately we can recognize that if we have 3 minus 2, that is going to give us 1. So we know that our 3 is going to be positive and our 2 is going to be negative because positive 3 multiplied by negative 2 is going to give us negative 6 and positive 3 minus 2 is going to give us 1. So this is our factored form of our denominator. So now let's write down our fraction as x plus 1, x plus 3, that's just what we got here for our numerator, divided by x plus 3, x minus 2. And again, that's just the factored form of our denominator. And we can see that we have a common factor here. We can cross out this x plus 3 because it's present in both the numerator and the denominator. And we're going to be left with x plus 1 over x minus 2. That's just what we have left over here. And this is going to be our simplified and final answer for this expression here. Again, what we have to remember is that we need to add a condition in here. And that condition is that x cannot be equal to negative 3. And that is because if we look at our fraction here, and this is the same thing as this, if we're just putting our numerator and denominator into their factored forms, we know that in this expression, this is going to be undefined when x is equal to negative 3. Because if x is equal to negative 3 here, negative 3 plus 3 is equal to 0. And if we have a 0 here multiplied by whatever we have in here, that is going to make this entire fraction divided by 0, which is undefined. So this is going to be undefined at negative 3. But this is not undefined at negative 3. This is only going to be undefined at 2. So to make these two equivalent, we need to add the condition that x cannot be equal to negative 3, and now these are equivalent. And in addition, x also cannot be equal to 2, because again, if we have 2 minus 2, that is 0, and that would make this whole thing undefined. 